بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم has laid down a path for us to follow and it is the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sirat mustaqim the straight path and we're ordered as muslims to follow this path in our da'wah how we call people and invite people to islam how we call the muslims back to the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam how we uh, believe our creed and we take our creed from kitab wa sunnah we take our minhaj our methodology of giving da'wah and how we and those masail those issues that relate to propagating islam and practicing islam we take that from kitab wa sunnah we also min fadli allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are guided in our manners on how we should deal with one another how we should treat one another as muslims how we should treat our muslim brothers and our muslim sisters may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala preserve us all and give us all guidance amin ya rabbil alamin and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us for our many many sins and something very briefly i just wanted to make an ishara or make a, a quick point is the importance of being cautious of who you listen to when you take knowledge that we have to be cautious to know something about those people who we follow and who we take our islamic knowledge you know is their knowledge authentic does it come from the quran and the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is it in accordance with the methodology of the salaf salih radiyallahu ta'ala anhu majma'in how the sahaba to rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam how they propagated islam so we have to know who we're taking knowledge from and we have to know the proper sabil or way of giving da'wah and the the point i wanted to make here or what i wanted to emphasize is to be cautious of a few things that we see sometimes we see some of our brothers and sisters are eager to give da'wah but they have no knowledge this is a trap that people have been falling into for quite some time and we have whole jama'at whole groups that are based on giving da'wah with no knowledge and they try to use as a hujja as a dalil or evidence for what they do they say the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said balagha anni wa lo aya and this is true the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said uh, you know speak about me even if it was one verse or even if it was one uh, basically meaning one sentence so relate something even if you just have very little knowledge yes as muslims we should share the message of islam to the extent of our ability this is where we have to realize that it is muqayyid that it is restricted that it's not just for everyone to speak about the religion someone who doesn't uh, know the the arabic language for example or they do not have the uh, ability to go to the sources and understand the sources and make istilal use the sources in the appropriate way as the ulama have made uh, use of those texts then they should not be calling to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and if they do they should only call to the extent of their ability then we have another group of brothers and sisters who in fact have restricted their da'wah to a type of entertainment da'wah that they try so much to appeal to the youth that they begin to water down so many of the principles of Islam this is a very dangerous thing they make Islam as if it's just a, a comedy show or as Islam is another type of gang banging or Islam should appeal to the rappers so we should rap into jannah or another group of them as we've heard of some particular individuals in their videos or on youtube that they're doing magic tricks and so forth and when you look at what their dao is built upon it's built upon entertainment some of the individuals even have they have some knowledge they were taught to level and but they reduced their knowledge they reduced their knowledge and degraded their knowledge degraded the minhaj and the madhhab of the salaf salih radiyallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in by 
entertaining, getting into entertainment, entertainment dawah. We have enough entertainment to, to deal with as Muslims to try to combat and encourage our youth to avoid. But we don't need the, our du'at, the people calling to the haq, who are the, set the examples of the truth, calling to dhalab and misguided ways and new forms of entertainment. So this is imperative that we understand this. It's imperative that we come back to the uh, sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ said, The Prophet ﷺ said, He said, Beware of newly invented matters. And every uh, innovation is going astray, and every going astray leads to the fire. Dalala leads to going to the fire. وَعِيَادُ بِاللَّهِ مِنْ ذَلِكَ so it's imperative that we take the suluk, the manners, and the path of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the minhaj, the methodology of how he alayhi salatu wasallam gave dawah, and how the Sahaba radiyallahu taala anhum ajma'in, how they gave dawah. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, giving us a warning about, you know, those people who would distort the dawah, distort the aqidah, distort the minhaj, and come up with things we've never heard. He sallallahu alaihi wasallam said. سيكون أقوام يحدثونكم بما لم تسمعوا أنتم ولا أباؤكم فإياكم وإياهم. The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, as was narrated in Sahih Muslim, that there would come a people who would speak, speak to you, meaning that maybe they're giving da'wah to you or they're they're speaking. With something that you've never heard before. So this fits under this new types of dawah, new types of innovative ways of trying to uh, uh, allegedly help Islam. But in fact, you're calling people to go away from the Sabil al And he said, This is a way that you've never heard. You nor your fathers. So beware of them. Uh, and warn them. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, or warn against them. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam illustrated for us that we should be cautious about who we take our knowledge from. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, uh, The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said in an authentic hadith, he said. فَمَنْ يَعِيشْ مِنْكُمْ بَعْدِ فَسَيَّرَا اخْتَلَافٍ كَثِيرًا فَعَلَيْكَ بِسُنَّةِ وَسُنَّةِ الْخُلَفَاءِ الرَّاشِدِينَ The Prophet صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وسلم he said that whoever lives after me shall see many differences and he gave us the resolution then عليه الصلاة والسلام he said Alaykum bi sunnati. So it's upon you my sunnah and the sunnah of the rightly guided khalifat. Who is the rightly guided khalifat? Abu Bakr, uh, Umar, Uthman, Ali, radiallahu ta'ala anhum, ajma'in. So we're ordered as Muslims to follow that sabil al mu'mineen and to avoid these various types of way of going astray. So beware, brothers and sisters, of those people who invite you to new types of da'wah. They say, hey, let's go to the church and just have debates like some of the some of the brothers who may Allah forgive us and forgive them and have mercy upon us and mercy upon them who really got into the da'wah of, uh, of debating Christian preachers and so forth and priests. In fact, when we look at the natija or the effect of this type of da'wah, we find that mainly it provides entertainment for the Muslims. And it wasn't that people became Muslim from watching uh, their religion either be degraded or their priest falling short, but generally they stayed upon what they were upon and it just became a gathering of uh, entertainment and videos for the Muslims to watch later as entertainment. So we have to understand that that is not the proper way to give dawah. Now, that does not mean we don't call the Jews and the Christians and the Hindus and the Sikhs and everyone to the beauty of Islam. Of course we do. 
But we do it with knowledge and we make sure that we go back to the Qur'an as our source. Not necessarily pointing out the mistakes of their books and thinking that that's going to shape them into Islam. Because most of the people believe based upon their desires. So they don't follow based on knowledge and fiqh. Most of the people don't. It's only those who Allah has favored to want to seek and want to know more and want to know and follow the truth. Those people might benefit from that type of da'wah, but that is not the asal of the da'wah. We didn't see the Prophet Sallallahu going into the churches and having debates and so forth, but rather he just called them to Tawheed. He invited them to what Islam is. He illustrated Islam by his manners and his ways of dealing with people and his kalima, his calling to Tawheed, calling to the oneness of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, calling to the rububiyyat Allah, rububiyyat Allah, so he, he called to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's lordship. He called to the oneness uh, of ibadatillah, of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And he called to the oneness and the divineness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes. So this is the sabila mu'mineen. This is what we have to strive to do. And beware of new types of entertaining da'wah. Then there's another type of people that they call and the people will gather around them. They have big lectures. You don't see them teaching the books of the Salaf. You don't teach them, see them teaching the books of the Sunnah. But instead they have very entertaining lectures. So you have to be cautious. And you have to uh, invite those brothers and sisters back to the Sunnah of the Prophet Wasallam. Tell them, brother, can you teach us about Islam? Can you tell and explain and give us what you learned from the ulama, from the scholars, if you studied with the scholars. And can you tell us, give us some of the explanations from Ahl Sunnah and from the Ahl Ilm, if indeed you read the books of Ahl Sunnah and Ahl Ilm? Because Islam is not about entertainment. Islam and Dawah is not about grouping together masses of people without substance. As we see, many of the Sufis, many of the people, some of the people who call to shirk openly, and some who call to it privately. And invite you to the places of shirk to go study in places like Dar al and Hadramaut, which is a place of shirk, well known place of shirk, that they teach you things that was not known to the Prophet and that the Prophet warned against. These people get big audiences of people, but do they command the good and forbid the evil? Do they invite the people back to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet? Do they invite the people back to what Imam Abu Hanifa was upon, what Imam Malik was upon, what Imam Shafi'i was upon, what Imam uh, Ahmed bin Hanbal, rahimahumullah jami'an, what they were upon? Rahimahumullah? La, we don't see that. We see them inviting them to entertainment. We see the men and women mixing together and enjoying and clapping and just uh, feeling as if you're just in any kind of gathering. It could be a gathering at a rock concert. It could be a rap concert. It could be the same as their, their Dao form. Or it could be any kind of form of entertainment or just some school gathering. You don't see any differences because there's no distinguish. Being, uh, the Dao is not distinguished. It doesn't distinguish itself from any of those other entertainment venues. So I ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides us and blesses us to be of those who adhere to Kitab Allah wa sallatu rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and may Allah forgive us for our many sins and bless us to practice this deen, this blessed deen in a manner that pleases Allah and to be sincere for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.